today I'm going to show you how I got over 7,000 lumens from this tiny little LED chip. You want to take your building and modding to the absolute extreme to squeeze out every last drop you possibly can. There's one thing that you always need to remember. Thermal path is king. Now, I wanted to find out how much we could really, really push that limit, so I decided to take it to the next level and try some liquid cooling, and I ordered some copper tubing like this. For the pump on our water-cooled LED project, I decided to use a fish tank pump because they're low voltage 12 volt DC, which is pretty close to what we'll need. And I went to O'Reilly's and picked up some brake line tubing. What I did was I took two pieces and cut them to length and then butted them up side by side and then I reflow soldered the LED over the top of them. I put the battery negative contact right directly on the copper soldered together with the thermal pad of the LED and only left the battery positive side overhanging so that I would have as much contact with the copper as possible. Next I attached the vacuum lines to the end of our copper tubing and tested the pump. Now all we need is our water reservoir. This little pump does a really good job of circulating the water. Unfortunately, my tubing doesn't do a very good job of keeping it in. So I had no real choice but to turn to epoxy, which is one of my least favorite ways to do things, but in this case it works. Once our two-part epoxy had a chance to dry, I came back and gave it another shot, only to find that we still had more leaks. Somehow, it never occurred to me that in between the two pieces of copper tubing, the water would leak out. That's alright, more epoxy! Now that we have our coolant in place, it's time to give it a shot and test this out. I'll just hook up the LED to my bench power supply so that we can monitor the voltage and amperage and I checked the data sheet for our XHP70 LED, and if I'm reading it correctly, this particular emitter is rated at 3773 lumens at 4800 milliamps. If you're not familiar with this setup, I do have a video that shows how to make it, and also, if you're watching this, that number right there is not the actual lumen count. You have to multiply that number times 10 and then times 0.37. The major advantage of building a water-cooled LED flashlight is how stable the output is. Even when we get up into super high amperage, it just stays perfectly level. Now, some of you may be thinking that's all fine and dandy, that you were able to get about double out of an LED that was only rated at around half of that, but how is that going to go into a flashlight? Well, I'm glad... I asked. The first thing we're going to need for our project is a nice piece of brass tubing. Next, we are going to use a copper MCPCB, but not just like it is. I decided to take it and put it in my lathe and basically cut a hole in the center of it in the bottom to make the pad between the LED and the water as thin as possible. With that done, I will reflow solder the MCPCB and the LED emitter together on the end of our piece of tubing. With that done, I made a small collar so that I could slip around the tube for our reflector to sit on. I ran the tube that will pump the water in all the way up to about a half inch from the very top so that the coldest water will be hitting the base of the MCPCB where the LED is and I put the tube that takes it out just a couple of inches in there and you guessed it, more epoxy! I reached out to my company's graphic design team to see if they could come up with a sketch to help everybody better understand what this setup was like and here's what they came up with. 
they don't get paid much. Next I ran the wires for our LEDs up through the base of the plastic collar. This will allow the reflector to sit flat. Since the needs of our pump and our LED electrically are so different, I'm going to have to just run two different batteries to them. For the pump, I'm going to stick with my 318650 setup, but for the LED, I want to drive it really, really hard, so I want to use 26650s. So I took an old Maglite tube and I gutted the switch and wired up hard contacts to it. and sleeved it for my batteries. Then I ran the wires up to a 10 amp Judco switch. I ran a separate switch for the water pump. My first idea for the water pump was to stick a tube on the other end of it and use a water jug, a plastic bottle basically, to fill up for my reservoir. However, I even after repeated attempts, I couldn't get the pump to prime and so that was out. After scouring the cabinets at my house and trying to find something I could sacrifice, I settled on a mason jar. Now all we need to do is attach our reflector. Can you guess how we're going to do that? Oh, <laughs> not epoxy. Why would you think that? Now that we have everything basically hooked up, it's time to test the output of our light on the new power supply. Around 5 amps is what I got initially, which sounds really low, but remember we're on a 12 volt MCPCB now and not a 6 volt setup like we were before. Running only my 426-650s really wasn't going to get us there. So after bleeding off the over voltage from the cells, I decided to add some more voltage by sticking a nickel metal hydride battery in there with it instead of my spacer. If you're new to modding, don't just try stuff with batteries. It's really important that you know what you're doing. So don't be all... You, alright? I learned it by watching you. Because I said stuff can happen. Now with the over voltage drained off the cells, this did give me a more stable current for long term, but it didn't really boost the output. It just put me back basically right where I was, so I went ahead and added another cell. Now we're getting somewhere. This is basically right on par with where we were at before. In fact, we got just slightly higher out the gate than what we had in the first place, so I'm happy with that. Now all we need is an effective way to cart this mess around. I assure you, the Ghostbusters are so jealous right now. The beam of our water-cooled LED flashlight is pretty much what you'd think. It's all of the power of a multimeter setup concentrated into one tight hot spot. Even after minutes and minutes of runtime, you don't notice visually any drop. Here's a shot of the Ace Beam L16 that I reviewed recently with its XHP35 high LED. Now our water-cooled LED flashlight. Did you learn something from the video? Was it entertaining to you? Let me know. If you got something out of it, hit that like button. For more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Good lucks. <laughs>